Welcome to another round of the Notion Update Report. Keeping track of all the small and big things that Notion releases can be quite tough. Which is why in this series we go over every single Notion update together. That way you'll never miss anything important. So here we go, 7 new Notion features and how you can best use them. Let's kick things off with a big surprise, suggested edits. That means we now have a lightweight track changes feature, which makes editing documents in Notion so much easier. So this is how it works. Let's take a look at our page here, right? This is a uh, draft for a newsletter I'm writing. And I can now click on the top three corner, these three dots, and turn on the suggest edits mode. And we see that something has changed because we have now this blue suggesting um, bubble here. And if I were to delete something, it actually doesn't disappear. It just gets grayed out. And we create on the side this comment-like structure that tells me, okay, what was deleted and by whom. And of course, the same happens if I just add something new. Uh, let's uh, add a cool <laughs> introduction here. And we see again here on the side, right, what was changed by that person. Now, the one thing that is not as nice here in Notion as, for example, in Word is that you can't uh, hide these suggested edits, right? If I go out of my suggested edit mode, either by clicking here or by turning uh, the settings off here again, everything is still there. And the only way to really get rid of them is to either approve them. So if I say, okay, yes, let's, uh, it, let's add this stuff here. I can click on plus and then it actually uh, gets added here as a page block. Or I can, of course, reject any changes and then goes back to normal. But we, uh, once we have suggested edits on a page, we will keep seeing them. Now, one last thing here, the other way to turn that on is to just select anything. And then we see here in the newly designed options, we have still the comments, but we also have now the suggest edits feature. So that's another way to quickly launch into that mode. The next one is another update for better documents, search and replace. I've been waiting for this one for a while now because it makes again, editing documents so much easier. So we see I have a spelling mistake here and I don't know how often that happened. So in order to make sure that this is not wrong in the document, I can now just press command F to pull up search. And here in the new search menu, if I uh, type something in, right, as before, it will find it. But now I get the options here to replace. So if I hover over this and say, okay, please <laughs> replace all mention of that with introduction. And then we can either, as usually, you know, replace them one by one or replace all instances of it with a single click. Small, but super neat feature. Note that this search on a page with command F, right, is very different from Notion's global search within the whole workspace that you can pull up with either command G or with command K. Both shortcuts work, and if you have the desktop app installed, quick little tip, you can actually also use command shift K to pull up Notion search if you're in a completely different app. You don't need to have Notion open to quickly search and find the documents. And number three rounds out these updates with a new floating navbar. You might have spotted them already in your Notion workspace, these little icons on the side, and if you hover over them, you now see the table of content here on the side, and it's floating, right? So if I can I go down uh, and can keep going along, and it will always show me where I am and highlight the specific section. Super useful. It's a nice addition to the other table of content, right? We can always, of course, uh, type TOC uh, to pull it up as a block, but that one is, uh, you know, stuck to the page, so it doesn't move with us down the uh, page if we scroll. So really nice feature update. And in case you don't want to see it on any page, you can always turn it off by clicking on the three dots on the top corner and then table of contents, turn it off, and then it disappears. Navigating your Notion workspace is getting much faster with the new tab search feature. For this new feature, you need to be using the Notion desktop app. And as you know, that desktop app has tabs, so you can have different Notion pages open in it. And now if you press the shortcut for a new tab, uh, so command T, it will actually open up search. So that means if you know where you want to go, for example, to the simple forum, it's super simple. And I just open it now in a new tab, right, and set up in the same one as before. If you don't like this new behavior, you can always go back into settings and members. And then under my settings, you'll find this new tab search toggle. And you can toggle that off. Now, if you do that, then we'll revert back to its uh, original default settings. And that's the one that you find here under open on start. So here you can choose whether when you press, you know, new tab or open a new window or launch an ocean again, whether it should open in. Uh, the top page in your favorites, or just like a new empty tab. Speaking of search, Notion has dropped a huge AI update that has largely gone unnoticed. I'm talking about AI connectors. You might already know Q&A, my personal favorite use case for Notion AI. You can think of Q&A as if ChatGPT had access to all the knowledge in your Notion workspace, which means you can just ask any question and will find the relevant pieces of information in your workspace and then return an answer together with links to all the documents where it found that stuff so you can go for a deeper look as well. AI connectors make that even better. You can now connect Slack to Q&A, which means when you ask a question, it won't just search in your Notion knowledge, but also in all your Slack conversations for your team. 
This is an insane update if your team uses both Notion for knowledge management and Slack for communication. But even if that isn't the case, it's still a really exciting update because a lot of other AI connectors are planned for the future. And when that happens, Notion will be able to talk to pretty much all the tools in your tool stack and get the information it needs to answer the question that you ask it. So if you haven't tried Q&A yet, now is the time. I've got a link for it in the description. Update number six is also AI related. Q&A has now access to ChatGPT, which means that if you ask a question that can't be answered with either the Notion knowledge or Slack, it will draw on the general knowledge of ChatGPT to help find a solution. And last but certainly not least, we got a new customized layout for our databases. This update is part of Notion's ongoing effort to simplify and streamline the UI, particularly for new users who might be overwhelmed by all the different choices. Now, in order to like, customize the database, you now need to go in with three dots and then you see here you have this new customize option uh, with the name of the database that you're currently looking at. And behind that toggle, we have now a lot of the more advanced features. So we still have some basic ones like properties, filter sorts and stuff, but under customized ones, we now see the option to turn on or off sub items. So these are turned on here currently, right? That's why they show up up here and I can click in here to change any things. And then all the other uh, options. So dependencies have been moved here. The option to turn a database into a task database with the fact that it will show in the home <laughs> view under my tasks is here and we can add a bunch of uh, suggested properties. Now, these suggested properties will depend on what database you're looking at and what properties you have already set up. So this might change from page to page. So you can't always, you know, uh, or you won't be always able to see uh, the same ones. This is sort of contextual, but the main ones, sub items, dependencies, and the option to turn it into home will always be there. Plus uh, automations and connections have also been moved here for the most part. So much for this Notion update report. If you missed the previous one, where not just go over seven, but 17 new Notion features that were recently released, then just click here and I'll see you in a few seconds.